Hi everyone, it's Karen with Naturally with Karen. And I thought I'd stop by with a live stream today that really talks about mind-body medicine. Mind-body medicine is so much more than pulling out a yoga mat and doing a guided meditation. That's a powerful part of it. To get the mind you know, clear and able to focus on what's going on inside of us, our thinking, our thoughts, let me give you an example. For the last 35 years, I started to really understand what mind-body was, how our thoughts produce certain predictable reactions in the body. So if we're going along and everything's pretty copacetic and it's just really wonderful, it might not be quite you know, the deal, but that's not the way any of our lives are. We have toxic coworkers, from time to time, maybe a lot of pressure because we're putting ourselves through college or we're worried about our children. Maybe there's financial problems. Maybe your husband or your wife has a situation or maybe you wanna eat really healthy, which is super common in my line of work. And your husband or your wife is like, I'm not eating that junk. I mean, forget it. And we're not cooking two different meals. And so I've had clients that feel kind of stressed. So I went through something, you know, involving a close family member that was a male. And it really caused me a lot of grief and stress and pain because we love our family members and we want them to change a behavior or we want a situation to change or we want them to heal. We're worried about them. Worry over an extended period of time creates something called an oxygen deprivation meaning that your thoughts are in worry and stress mode. And so you're starting to constrict the body through worry, fear, tension, stress, all of those things. And when you do that, it produces a predictable oxygen deprivation in the body. Now, Louise Hay, you may be familiar with her book, which is what I read in 1984, 84, 85, called You Can Heal Your Life. And that's how I began as a baby beginner in mind-body medicine. 35 years later, I'm working it with my clients to a very high, uh, sophisticated way of using it because any, anyone would 35 years later. So what I was just describing about mind-body medicine where you could have a predictable oxygen deprivation was noted as a tensomyositis syndrome by Dr. John Sarno. He was a professor and also a doctor, an MD in New Syracuse, New York. And so people um, that needed to have neck and back surgeries done, they thought would be flown, you know, would fly in to see Dr. John Sarno. And he would put them in 90 minute group coaching sessions where they were able to um, release out their tension through talking and sharing. And some of it is kind of similar to the AA. 12-step uh, programs where you know you're sharing and releasing and caring you're getting support but really the root of all of this is that you're releasing tension in the mind because tension in the mind it doesn't just stay there okay so in my situation I took a couple of really long walks I'm going to go again probably many times this week and I made the walk about two, two and a half hours to go from the Rose Garden in Duluth all the way down to up to the lighthouse and circle around and around the canal park area. And so I made it about a two and a half hour, maybe a little bit longer walk. And I was really needing to do that for a long time. And I wore some incredibly flexible shoes. They're kind of that real cheapy tennis shoes from Walmart that have the Tempur-Pedic in the bottom. So they bend a lot, you know, they're very flexible soled. And I noticed that after the second day, you know, I started to feel a lot of tension in the ball of my foot, you know. I put a picture up, if it didn't show up, I'll, I'm trying to see if it's there, I'll post another picture, but you can easily Google a foot or a hand reflexology chart. And so I realized that it was much like one of my clients who has a neuroma on her foot and she often will ask me to go in there and really get some circulation to it and I can feel a hardened spot there that's developed a lot of scar tissue. 
over you know 16 plus years going on 17 now I've done massage and body work and I've worked on a great many different situations moving inflammation manually moving inflammation breaking up scar tissue uh, pulling out my elbows and doing some loamy loamy but in this case now I was working on myself and I could have just had a knee jerk like many of my clients do because all we've really ever been taught in the mainstream world is that something's really going on with my foot so I'm going to go to my primary care physician my PCP and then I'm going to see if I can get a referral to a podiatrist so my foot has been sore for just a couple of days but today I realized that I need to actually go to the gym as well. It was rainy and drizzly and, and the thunderstorms were just super powerful and I, I love them here in Northeast Minnesota. This one was particularly powerful. And I went over to the gym and I did an hour on the elliptical. It's you know a, a machine that goes in a, in a motion that's really conducive for your, your knees and your hips. And I do it at about a level 10 because I've built up to it for a great many years. I've always been a person who does a lot of working out. And so after I did that, I took a nice shower at the gym and I lay down in the sauna and it probably, it was pretty hot. It was over hundred and some odd degrees, probably closer to 160. And I laid in there for like about 10 minutes and then 15 minutes and then 10 minutes a third time while I drank between the workout and the sauna three really large containers of filtered water. When I got home, I noticed that between the two super long walks that I did and the hour on the elliptical and also touching in and saying, you know what, Karen, you were pretty sad about that. You know, I did some self-talk. You were pretty sad about what was going on. You felt like, what if you might lose this person? They might die. You know, you felt like you had a lot of feelings. And so the ball of my foot, if you look at a foot reflexology book or chart, and I have done reflexology just inside and out for so many years that now it's really second nature to me to just think this way, to work this way with my hands, to coach my clients this way, is that on the ball of my foot, it corresponds with my chest, but more so even my lung. Okay. The lungs, as Louise Hay identified, is the causative or the root area for grief and sadness. I had a lot of sadness. I didn't want to lose my loved one. I was terribly worried. I was very, very stressed. And, um, you know, it's really, it really took a toll on me. And thankfully, I do what I do so I know how to rebuild myself and, you know, reconstruct, rehabilitate, and regenerate myself. To regenerate means to get your generator up and firing and getting strong again. So I was able to use walking predominantly. And while I've got a meeting in Duluth today from you know at five o'clock, I'll be able to do the walking again tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, you know, around the times when it's rainy, while it's still nice enough to get out before it gets really cold and icy up here. But that's really what I wanted to share was that. Over the last 35 years, you know, clients have had coaching sessions and sometimes clients want to control the session. Some of the time, most of the time my clients don't. If that's you and you cancel a session and you think, oh, everything's okay. What I like to do is to be able to go deeper because when we're on the screen one-on-one, -on -one, I can see the body language you start to tell me about your story and it's easy to assume that it might just be visiting or it isn't really accomplishing much. But in fact, I'm sitting here taking notes and really being very interested and in figuring out what is the root of it? Because most of the time clients couldn't just say, well, I was really sad about something. So it's the ball of my foot and I'm, that's my job. Okay. My job is to say, oh, I see, I can see what's, I just had a glitch where it froze for a minute. I can see exactly what's going on. So I've been able to do that with Parkinson's and myasthenia gravis, you know, um, I had a client named Beth and she had myasthenia gravis, which involves the thymus gland behind the heart. And so as I said, you know, please tell me a little bit about your story. I'm interested. Now see, that could appear like I'm just getting paid to visit with you. 
or you don't really need to do much, you know, you can handle it totally on your own. But in fact, to go through this kind of a journey and have someone with my level of, of experience to be able to say, here's exactly what I see that's going on. And here's something we can turn around and here's what's showing up on your hair tissue mineral analysis. And here's what's showing up in the doctor's office. But by and large, the majority of people are gonna say, I've got foot pain. My foot pain hurt pretty bad. I was gonna say it's probably about a seven out of a 10. But I said to myself, something is healing inside of you, Karen. And I'm so familiar with that. You're healing and releasing a lot of grief and sadness that could have been stuck in the lung meridian, in the lung reflex point. So instead of us going and just totally trying to heal our lungs, we can walk and release it by walking either barefoot or with a super bendable, flexible shoe. And we can, um, bless up, Melody, good to see you, and Pam. So we can release these things, these feelings, these thoughts, or what Dr. John Sarno called tensomyositis syndromes that showed up as, you know, tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, TMJ, all neck pain, especially low back pain, which is very emotional and very connected to the thoughts, okay? So mind-body medicine is actually, when it comes to being an herbalist, a massage therapist, a certified yoga teacher, a detoxification expert, um, what else? If you had 35 years, you could gather many things too. Um, but mind-body medicine is actually one of the most powerful medicines that I have to work with people and it's where people get confused and think I don't need to keep my coaching session tonight I'll go ahead and book it for a week from now because you know it just looks like we're not really doing much well we are we're actually doing something incredibly deep and it might look on the surface like it's just visiting but it's actually me taking in lots of information about you so that I'm able to help you put together a great plan so this is just a short live stream. I don't know if you saw some of the pictures earlier, but I made some fresh, natural, unhulled sesame seed milk with real pure maple syrup and vanilla. And then I milked it through my nut milk bag and it's in the refrigerator. So now when I want to make a nice smoothie or if it starts to get kind of cold, I can put it over a bowl of oatmeal whatever, right? Um, I'm taking some of my leftover wild rice and spinach and garlic. I worked at the Harvest Festival and, and we got, you know, about, I got probably about seven or eight heads of garlic that had been forked and they were going to toss them. So those of us that volunteered could take some of the, um, the garlic that had been forked. So spinach and I put tomatoes, some of my heirloom tomatoes in there and garlic and the wild rice that I got from Anahata Herbals. And it was just absolutely delicious. That's how I like. I like my food rhythm or my food movement to be, what do I have to use up? Well, I needed to use up the spinach and I really needed to use up the tomatoes. And I knew that the garlic was gonna give me that extra little boost of herbal antibiotic. And so I peeled off and threw away the garlic that had been you know, stabbed with the fork and it looked like it was getting kind of not so good, right? You, you wouldn't wanna eat that. It was really exposed for a long time in the dirt and it was kind of yucky. But I peeled it off and I used the rest of it. Now sesame seeds, I noticed were like 4.49 a pound. I used about a cup of sesame seeds and I made a really thick milk because I was making a medicinal tonic so instead of me going and buying another ionic zinc bottle, I made myself a really super medicinal sesame seed milk. And I had a little bit of a play on words, which is why I called it open sesame. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, where a lot of people would throw something away, like the peaches that I was given because they were really bruised on one side. I've got my paring knife out that I get at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. I've got four of them now and I'm cutting off the bad spots. I'm you know, rinsing them really well and washing them and I'm putting them in freezer bags. And then later, just like yesterday, I had a delicious cinnamon peach smoothie, okay? 
So thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, if you like this, I'm going to be uploading it to my YouTube channel at Naturally with Karen. And I appreciate if you go over there and subscribe because I can do live events like this that I'm doing on Facebook once we get a thousand people. Thank you. Make it a great day.